Hello and welcome to another painting session. In this painting session we are painting the Master of Deceit, the Emperor himself. So this is Emperor Palpatine, he's primed and we are going to paint him. He's actually quite an easy paint job so we're going to try and make him quite simple but also add a little bit more to him than just leaving it as one sort of flat colour. Um, so we're going to start with the Citadel Flayed One Flesh. I found a really good and useful um, sort of like little pattern for doing bright skin colours and it is combining Citadel and Vallejo colours together so we're using the Flayed One Flesh as a base tone so once you've got that sort of creamy mixture, that sort of um, base tone in we're going to then go back in with a soft tone so this is kind of like a Seraphim Sepia and things like that this is um, it's quite a light colour brand so this will give you a sepia sort of colour to the skin should sit nicely in the recesses and create a little bit of depth onto those hands and face and bring out that character as you can see. Now once we've done that we're going to go back to the flayed one flesh and once we go back we're just going to paint that flayed one flesh back onto the areas of the face and the hands where uh, the shade hasn't rested because the shade is set now sort of in between all of the eyes and things like that. So we're just going to build our colour back up across the hands, across the knuckles, the fingers, those sorts of things as well. Being sort of a light brown colour should create a little bit more colour between um, the, the light sort of whitish sort of hands and face and then obviously the, the, the deeper recesses. You could paint it a black as well if you wanted to use like a black shade but personally I think the, the brown shade is a little bit nicer, it's a little bit more forgiving, it's not as harsh and it's not as dark toned because the danger is within wearing black and you're using black shades you can sort of take away a little bit of the character. So once all of that's dried you're going to go on and use the Vallejo Elphic Flesh. Now Elphic Flesh is kind of like Flayed One Flesh, but it's um, it's a tone lighter, so this is quite a light sort of cream colour. So you're going to want to put this on top of the Flayed One Flesh, and that will give you that step up then, so that will create the element of depth and that colour and that highlighting, especially across things like the knuckles, the nose, um, in between sort of his eyebrows as well. Um, and that should be all you need to do for the skin. You can if you want touch it up and add a little bit of white just across things like the knuckles um, but I'm not going to do that, I want to try and make this as easy as possible. So from there we're going to do the inside of his cloak, uh, Vallejo Red. Um, I know that within a lot of the photos and things like that that you see the Emperor a lot of the time he's wearing pretty much just black but again I wanted to give this a little bit more colour, I don't want him to just be covered in just black because then it wouldn't be as appealing or as nice to look at sort of when it's on the table or when it's in your collection and things like that so just painting the inside of his robes with this red it is a dark sort of um, crimsony red this one it's not a very light red so that's gonna be great because it'll tone down with us as well from there then I'm gonna paint the robes as a German grey um, if you're a Citadel user, you could use something like an Eshing Grey instead, which is a very dark grey. Eshing Grey is one of my favourite Citadel colours. Um, and the reason why I'm painting it grey and not black, again, is just because black is too final. So, when you paint something black, you can tend to just lose everything. So you can lose your detail, you can lose your colour, you can lose your depth. Or you tend to have to then bring it back up. So for me, I like to paint it an off-shade uh, black, so a really dark shade like this. So a dark grey, which will seem like it's black, but it will also have a little bit more colour when you turn him and you see him in the light as well. And now you'll see, by using that flayed one flesh, that lighter skin colour, you see against that grey just how much his skin and his face pops in this. And that's fantastic, that's kind of what we want, is that extreme contrast between the light and the dark. Um, so yeah, once we've done that, I'm just going to go across and cover him in a null oil wash from Citadel. Um, you know, you can use a... Um, you can use a dark tone from the Army Painter or a, a black wash from Vallejo, whatever is your forte, whatever is your, your personal choice. Um, I'm just using the Citadel one here at the moment. And from there you're going to want to build the colours back up, so we're just going to go back in. This one is um, can be a little bit awkward getting in to do this red, as you see I just put a little bit of red on my base there. 
um, and you just want to be careful not to get the red on the outer cloaks as well. So just take your time, use a very very fine brush and use very very structured thin line strokes just to get that red back and it will bring that red up lovely. From there we're going to do his cane. Um, so just going to start with a Vallejo Flat Earth. I'm just going to paint this cane. It's quite a light sort of uh, brand of flat earth. It's a nice little colour. Again, because his cloak is so dark, having something that's a little bit more of a colour will help to pop and uh, bring your eye towards that part of the miniature as well. It's going to be one of my favourite things when you think of one of the most powerful, one of the most um, nasty sort of Sith Lords and, and one of the most powerful people in the Star Wars universe using a king to walk. It's going to be quite a funny sort of uh, um, uh, a funny sort of contrast. So we're going to use the strong tone on that and just put that across so that that hits all of these recesses because his cane is actually quite bobbly as you'll notice. There's a lot of little bobbles and bulbs and bumps and things like that. And once that's dry we're going to use a highlighted beige brown just to catch where the bobbles are, so we're going to catch the bobbly bits of his cane, like so. Now you can take your time, you can be as precious and as, as careful as you like, or you can just pop little bits here and there, because again, this is going to show through between the base coat, the shade and the, the highlight. And again, it'll give you something different to look at on the miniature than just a black cloak, which is great. And now from there we're going to use a highlight now, so the highlight in is the cloak parts first. So I'm going to use a bloody red for this one. Bloody red is one of my favourite colours. The Vallejo bloody red is actually quite thin anyway, so uh, by the time you thin it down it becomes a really good colour to sort of build colours up. Because once you put multiple layers on, say by the time you do two or three layers like this, you build quite an intense lighter colour. Um, and it goes across the top of that red colour very, very, very nicely. So you can build this up a couple of times and you can build the vibrancy to, to create sort of folds and creases as much as you like. Um, you know, if you want to do one colour and you think, oh, that's bright enough, you know, he's supposed to be quite a dark character, then that's fine. If you want to build it up and create a little bit more um, folds and creases and depth, then you can do That's That's the, 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 the beauty with painting is the options are there for you. So, the blue, the reason why I picked up the blue and the reason why I said we're going to highlight in blue is a lot of the time when you look at photographs of the Emperor, he's got sort of a blue silhouette or a blue hue to him. So, we go into the flow improver. I'm using this um, this Winsor & Newton flow improver. I use this a lot for my paint and to thin my paints. I use this instead of water. Um, but if I want to use it, if I want to do something like this, we're going to make a glaze. I normally put quite a bit of the flow improver in so that then the glaze, the paint becomes very, very thin. Um, a little bit like a wash. And what I'm doing here is I'm using this uh, dark Prussian blue um, as a glaze just to catch some of the highlighted points. So I haven't gone back and rebuilt up any highlights or anything on his cloak. I painted him a dark grey, put a shade on him, that was enough. You could build the colour up again if you wanted, but I haven't. But then from there, we're just using this very, very, very thin layer of blue. Now it looks really blue when I'm painting it onto the miniature, but as it dries, because it's so thin, it's drying down so that it creates a blue tint, as you can see just across the hood. And that then is giving us that ability to create that blue hue without painting the model blue. And again, the good thing with that is when you look at him on the desk or when you look at him in your collection, he's going to have that sort of bluish hue, that blue colour that you see from photographs of the Emperor, but without painting the whole miniature a blue colour. And what I'm doing to, to get that sort of effect is I'm only painting down from the top, about halfway. And then from there, then you just blend that little bottom part in like so. You don't want to lose, uh, you don't want to leave like blobs of this. Because this is thin, the best thing is to drag it so that you get a nice smooth pull, a nice smooth layer of paint. If you leave a blob of the paint, it will of course dry thicker because there's more paint in that area than it needs. So as you see, I'm just using these little quick flick brush strokes straight down and I'm going from the top only down to about halfway and then I'm leaving it there 
so that then that creates almost as if there's a blue light or a blue tint coming from uh, a light source above the Emperor. And then for some of the final touches, or for the final touch I would think, um, just going to paint his brooch across the, uh, the neck piece of his cloak. And this is a little bit fiddly, so for this I'm using an army painter, plate mail metal. Plate mail metal is a very light uh, silver. You can use a Citadel Shining Silver if you want, that's also a very good colour. Um, and that's all I'm doing is just catching this little brooch here to finish him off. And there he is, that's pretty much all you need to do. The Emperor is quite a simplistic little character to paint. The beauty and the difficulty with this one was just trying to catch that blue tint, which I think I've done, I think we've got there. You have to let me know in the comments if you think that's a cool touch, if you think it works, if you think it's nice. And that's pretty much all there is to him. The Emperor is pretty simple, so I tried to give him a little bit more character and a little bit more colour than just being black, uh, a flat black. And again, you have to let me know what you think. Uh, all in all, really fun little paint job. Great to try out some new things. And as always, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed.